Today, we're doing Battle of the Pros, iPad Pro versus MacBook Pro. There's a lot of people are in the summer season, they're looking for a new device for going back to school or college or whatever you need this device for. In today's video, I'll be going over the pros and cons for whichever one you end up deciding. There's no easy answer. It all comes down to personal preference, but I'm gonna do my best to highlight those major pros and cons so that at the end of the video, you can decide which one is best for you. Let's begin. Long-term support is a good question a lot of people bring up when they're looking to make a large investment in a $1,000 to $1,200 large purchase. And that's a big decision a lot of people are making right now because the recently announced MacBook Pro is on the more affordable end of the MacBook line and it is really coming up close to the price point of the iPad Pro and a lot of the accessories people would end up buying with that anyway. Given 99% of people who end up purchasing the iPad Pro, most likely you're gonna end up buying the folio cover, which is an extra 100 bucks, or if you want that keyboard case so much, that's an extra 1200 bucks, which means in regards to price point, the iPad Pro and the more affordable MacBook Pro are pretty close when it comes to price. Also comparing those two different sizes, screen real estate is very similar as well with a 13.3 inch display on that budget end MacBook Pro and a 12.9 inch display on the iPad Pro. Unless you put these things right next to each other, they're mostly going to be the same experience. Now, personally, I think for most general usage, whether it be taking notes or reading emails or watching videos, listening to music and all that kind of basic stuff. If you're just looking for a laptop slash tablet to do everything you need a basic computer to do, the iPad Pro is a lot more fun and a lot more exciting because of a lot of reasons. For one, it has Face ID just like the more recent generation iPhones and that far more reliable, far easier to set up and far simpler for you to unlock your device every single day than is the MacBook Pro's current Touch ID, which does work. If you have an Apple Watch, also you can use Unlock Your Mac with Apple Watch. So anytime you open up your MacBook, if you have it ready, registered to be paired with your Apple Watch, that means it'll be unlocked very quickly and you won't have to use that Touch ID biometric, but I still think you can't get close to the speed and the ease of the iPad Pro with just being able to tap anywhere on the display and boom, already unlocks from a vast array of angles. In fact, Face ID in the iPad Pro does work much better than it does on iPhones. If you care about this sort of thing, you have Memoji and Animoji for texting people or for FaceTime, just sort of fun tools that Apple gives to iOS users that you're not really going to find present on the macOS version of things. And you see a year ago, there was probably a lot more differences between iOS and macOS for people to find it easier to choose a Mac over because you want that external drive support or you want USB-C or you want to theoretically be able to use a mouse with your machine. So the iPad was a no-go. But in this situation with the upcoming iPad OS operating system, there's a lot less of those differences that make the iPad not as big a loss because you're still able to use external external drive support with the iPad. They now have added mouse support via accessibility settings. And now of course they even allow Safari to pull down the desktop version of websites instead of the mobile version, which used to be a huge disadvantage to the iPad, but it is no longer true once iPad OS comes out officially in September. But it is worth mentioning if you're not interested in running the iPad OS public beta on your iPad, you are gonna have to put up with the old style iOS 12 until the fall when iPad OS officially comes out. So if you're looking for a device that you need immediate access to drive support and you really, really want that desktop supported Safari, then you may be waiting on it a little bit with the iPad, whereas all the features you get with a Mac have years and years of tradition behind them. Of course, you'll be getting desktop versions of websites. Of course, you'll be getting external drive support. And of course, you'll be using a mouse with that included trackpad. In regards to ports, there's really just a tiny bit of a difference. The iPad Pro ships with USB-C and with the MacBook Pro, you receive two USB-C ports, except both of these have Thunderbolt 3 support. So if if you use a lot of external hard drives and importing and exporting footage, two different hard drives, you're definitely going to more appreciate the MacBook Pro. Even if it is the lower end model, that Thunderbolt 3 allows for much faster transfer speeds, despite the iPad Pro having that very, very powerful A12X chip, which in a Geekbench comparison, you're going to see the A12X chip probably taking the lead when it comes to that single core performance. And there may be certain applications that the iPad is better suited for, like games, 120 hertz support. So if you care about refresh rate, the iPad Pro is purely going to have a better display than the MacBook Pro does, which is of course locked at 60. Still a very good retina display, but I may add the bezels on that thing are definitely not as pretty. And maybe if you're in some kind of long distance relationship or you do a lot of video calling, the iPad Pro front facing and rear facing cameras are far better than the MacBook Pro's included webcam, which is nothing to be excited about. Very much unimpressive, low quality webcam. Apple hasn't changed it in years. Whereas on the iPad Pro, the front facing camera is 1080p and it supports 60 FPS. 
FPS. So if you care about that kind of thing, the iPad Pro wins there. In regards to a rich app market of apps that are optimized and run well for the iPad Pro, you've got the entire iOS app store, which has many, many years of optimization behind games like Minecraft and Fortnite. And with iPad OS coming up, you'll be able to pair your standard Xbox or Bluetooth controllers with your iPad and make it your own little mobile, tiny, powerful console. You can run games very, very well on the iPad Pro, whereas the MacBook Pro, while it is good at getting a lot of work done, Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, audio, video editing apps like that that are built for desktop are still going to be capable and easily running on the MacBook Pro. In regards to gameplay and that kind of thing, you probably won't see that much success with the MacBook Pro's department, unless you're just talking about Minecraft, whereas the iPad Pro actually has a fairly good selection of games to choose from, all of which run very, very well thanks to the A12X chip. While the iPad Pro does not ship with Thunderbolt 3, it does support very high resolution output, so if you wanted to dock it to a TV or output it to an external monitor, you still have the option of doing that. Plus, if you care about high resolution video recording or good photo taking, in any slight possibility, the iPad Pro is always going to win because it does have a 4K at 60 rear facing camera, which is great for video, and on the front facing camera, it also has portrait mode support thanks to those Face ID sensors. So if you care about that kind of thing, the iPad Pro does win. The really only reason you should care about the MacBook Pro over the iPad is those desktop applications. So if you're heavy into Adobe apps, you're definitely going to see more optimization and app support on the Mac OS side of things. There was talk at the iPad Pro's unveiling that we would get full Photoshop for the iPad, but we haven't. If you're okay with leaving the Adobe suite of apps or just the standard desktop apps that you're used to on your Mac, there are a ton of iOS alternatives that will get the job done in a lot of different ways. On the iPad Pro, you have things like LumaFusion and Affinity Photo, which I use on a daily basis and over the photo editing app is how I make all my video thumbnails. So you can do high advanced video editing and picture editing on the iPad Pro. You just may have to make a few extra purchases and adapt your learning style to a different form of interaction because a touch interface is very, very different from a keyboard and mouse interface. But with the iPad Pro, you don't have to worry about that butterfly keyboard if you weren't a fan of it. A lot of people who don't like the MacBook Pro keyboards are a fan of the smart keyboard that docks with your iPad Pro. They like the clickiness of it. And it's also incredibly compact given the iPad Pro is far lighter than the MacBook Pro. Though at the same time, just be aware that there have been some reports of them bending when putting a lot of pressure in them when they're being stored in backpacks or luggage. So you may have to baby the iPad Pro a little bit more than your MacBook Pro. Other advantage to the iPad Pro is that it comes in two sizes, both of which are cheaper than that of the baseline MacBook Pro. If you care about that 11 inch form factor and getting devices much more compact and easy to use in the hand, then the 11 inch iPad Pro could get the job done for you very easily. Whereas the MacBook Pro, if you're in that $1,000 to $1,500 price range, you're only gonna get one size for the MacBook Pro. Or if you decide to go with the MacBook Air, you're stuck at the 13 inch display. If you want the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you gotta spend well over $2,000. And once again, we don't know for sure if this generation of butterfly keyboard has failure problems because none have been reported yet. But if you do run into keyboard issues with the latest generation MacBook Pros, Apple will repair it for free once you take it to an Apple store. But yeah, that's an errand. That's a worry you really shouldn't have to worry about. And one you wouldn't have to worry about if you end up going with the iPad Pro. So between design preference and app support and speaker quality, both of these devices are going to get the majority of people's jobs done very, very well in an optimized manner that should be convenient and still give you a very premium feeling device on a day-to-day -day basis. What apps you need to have your machine support and how much money you have in your budget to splurge on MacBook accessories or iPad accessories all comes down to the core user, what you need this machine to do. In my opinion, if you're split between them, I'd say go with the iPad Pro. It's very exciting to see the operating system get stronger and get more and more support as time goes on. Plus the iOS app store is very, very rich. I love the cameras. I love Face ID. I love how versatile an iPad is. You can use it in so many different ways. The display is way sharper. Those curved corners, that high refresh rate. But of course, I know there's a ton of you out there that absolutely need that desktop app support. You don't really prefer touch to a keyboard and mouse interface. And for you guys, the MacBook Pro is clearly going to be the winner. Both of these products are likely not going to be refreshed anytime soon. I know the iPad Pro came out a while ago, but it's not going to get refreshed until June of 2020. And MacBook Pros are notoriously known for getting refreshed more often, but given the recently announced budget MacBook Pro just literally came out, it probably won't be updated around that June from 2020 timeframe. So no matter which one you go with, you're probably going to get around a year of it being the latest, greatest version of that product. So it's a win-win no matter which one you go with. I hope you enjoy whichever one you end up deciding for. And if you have more questions about it, feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or join our Discord. And also, if you're a student, be sure to pick up a pair of free headphones for Apple's promotional education.
education bundle right now. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.